Welcome to the channel Witness for Jesus. This is Dawn. It seems I have made an error. Whenever I make these videos, I always ask if anyone has any other information, please let me know. And if you believe I may have misrepresented Watchtower in any way, please let me know. So what I said in a couple of other videos, which I will reference, uh, I said that Watchtower teach that Jesus suffered to prove faithfulness. So when he was being beaten and hurt before his death, that Watchtower say he was doing that to prove faithfulness. And I said that Watchtower did not teach that he was bearing the punishment for our sins. That he was not taking the punishment due to each of us when he was suffering. However, someone called George Lopez uh, put a comment on my uh, channel and then several more comments, but basically he said, you clearly don't know what JWs teach. You misrepresent JWs claiming JWs don't believe Jesus bore our sins. What? That's a basic teaching in the JW religion. And he then provided several links to places where he believes Watchtower is saying that. So I'm going to just outline that. But I'd like to ask you for your help. You know, please, my lovely subscribers, I, I really, really would like your input on this one. The reason is it's really subtle and it ended up being quite complicated when I looked at the information. I believe that, I believe that they're not really saying that. However, I will admit that I made an error because they did print somewhere things to that effect. Okay, in, in, in several different places actually. But I'll explain to you why I thought they never mentioned it. The reason I thought they never mentioned it, uh, the fact that Jesus bore our sins, is because when I searched on JW.org, I uh, found several articles on JW.org, including, you know, one that's called Why Did Jesus Suffer? Which said that he suffered just to prove faithful. Um, so, obviously, I find... The information on JW.org. I also found it in, uh, I think the main teaching book says that as well, the one that they use for Bible studies. So clearly, if there's old references where they've published uh, the Ebor Our Sins, uh, they weren't coming up on the search on JW.org when I looked. And two of the references that George Lopez provided me were books in the 1970s. So I actually had to go and download them to check the references. Now, the books in the 1970s, actually, I don't believe were saying exactly what you said they were saying, but you can check them for yourself. I don't think they're that relevant to myself because they used to teach all kinds of things back in the 70s. In fact, going back, uh, Watchtower used to teach that we should worship Jesus, for instance, but they don't teach that now. Um, so basically, what, what we need to do is look at the more recent references that he provided. And one of them is the Isaiah book, which is the most important, I believe. So in the Isaiah book, it's volume two, and it's page 204. It starts to speak of um, this passage in Isaiah 53, and starts to speak of how did Jesus bear the suffering? Paragraph 23 says, how did Jesus bear the suffering of others? The Gospel of Matthew, quoting Isaiah 53 verse 4 says, people brought him many demon-possessed persons and he expelled the spirits with a word and he cured all who were faring badly that there might be fulfilled what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet saying, he himself took our sicknesses and carried our diseases. By curing those who came to him with various diseases, Jesus, in effect, took their suffering upon himself and such healings drew on his vitality. 
His ability to heal all kinds of ailments, physical and spiritual, proved that he was empowered to cleanse people from sin. Now, I had not heard this teaching before. This paragraph is saying that Jesus bore the suffering of others by the healings that he provided. And they quote Matthew. Now, Matthew, in Matthew chapter 8, 16 and 17, does say that he cured demon-possessed persons, etc., that there might be fulfilled what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took our sicknesses and carried our diseases. So it seems a bit like, why would Matthew uh, quote Isaiah 53 in relation to Jesus doing healing, which is what Watchtower are pointing out? Thankfully, I found a really good article online, uh, a scholarly article online, which relate to this. And it highlights the fact that there appears to be differences between Isaiah's words and Matthew's quotation of Isaiah. Let me just read a little part of that article. We can notice some apparent differences between Isaiah's words and Matthew's quotation. Isaiah speaks primarily of Christ's death on the cross, but Matthew speaks primarily of Christ's earthly ministry prior to his death. Isaiah speaks of eternal salvation. Matthew speaks of temporal blessings. Isaiah speaks of impurities of the soul. Matthew speaks of bodily diseases. Isaiah speaks of Christ's passion. Matthew speaks of Christ's compassion. Isaiah speaks of Christ's passive obedience. Matthew of Christ's active obedience. Does Matthew misinterpret or misapply this quotation from Isaiah? It goes on to say that no, Matthew did not misinterpret. It's just that Matthew was referring to the fact that uh, our sins relate to our illnesses. Um, that in Hebrew, um, our griefs can mean our sins. And sometimes the term for the sins means sickness or bodily disease. And that's how Matthew translates it. And that he, uh, you can read the article, read the article for yourself for further explanation as to why Matthew applies Isaiah in that sense. So even though Matthew applies Isaiah in that sense, when we come to the issue of Jesus suffering leading up to his death, that is completely separate from his suffering when he was healing people. When Jesus suffered uh, at his death, that was what Isaiah was referring to in the entirety of the passage. It's very clear uh, that Isaiah 53 is talking about Jesus' actual suffering leading up to his death and that his stripes and his bruises and his suffering were all bearing our sin. So as we've seen, Watchtower, first of all, in, in their Isaiah book, suggest that Jesus bore our sufferings through the healings he did. Yet, let's see what they say about the suffering he went through at his death. Paragraph 24 says, Yet to many it seemed that Jesus was plagued by God. After all, he suffered at the instigation of respected religious leaders. Remember, though, that he did not suffer on account of any sins of his own. Christ suffered for you, says Peter, leaving you a model for you to follow his steps closely. He committed no sin, nor was deception found in his mouth. He himself bore our sins in his own body upon the stake, in order that we might be done with sins and live to righteousness, and by his stripes you were healed. We were all at one time lost in sin, like sheep going astray. Through Jesus, however, Jehovah provided redemption from our sinful state. He caused our error 
to meet up with Jesus, to rest upon him. The sinless Jesus willingly suffered the penalty for our sins. By undeservedly suffering a shameful death on a stake, he made it possible for us to be reconciled to God. So here, this is where I'm willing to accept my error. I said that they'd never printed that Jesus bore our sins. Yet in this paragraph, it appears to be saying that, although I believe there's a subtle difference. It says, he caused our error to meet up with Jesus, to rest upon him. The sinless Jesus willingly suffered the penalty for our sins. So it seems as though they're actually saying what, what I believe, that Jesus suffered uh, for each of us our individual sins and he took our individual penalty. However, they're not, they're not saying that. They contradict themselves in many places on this matter, but put basically and simply. I asked George Lopez if he believes that Jesus bore our sin in his body. In what sense does he believe that Jesus bore our sin in his body? Because Watchtower teach that the only result of sin is death. Watchtower teach from uh, Romans where they, they take the scripture, the wages sin pays is death. They take that scripture to say that the only result of a human being's sin is death, physically being completely snuffed out of existence. Their theology is that the wicked will be killed, put out of existence, and that is it. So in what sense was Jesus bearing the punishment due to them if they believe that the only punishment due to them is being put out of existence in death. George Lopez could not answer that question because he admits that the only punishment for sin is death, according to his beliefs. Compare that with what I believe and what many other Christians believe. That punishment for sin relates not only and singularly to physical death. What I believe and what I believe the scriptures say is that when we are judged by Jesus and when we go before the great white throne, we will be judged according to our deeds, deeds done in the past. And that rather than the wicked suffering death only, they will suffer a punishment, an actual punishment, actual suffering. Jesus himself said, if your eye is causing you to stumble, pluck it out because you're better going into life with one eye than going into the fires of Gehenna, you know, with two. If the fires of Gehenna means the grave, then what's the point of having two eyes or whatever? It wouldn't even be relevant. Throughout the scriptures, we're taught that there is a punishment. It is not justice that every person receives the same just being out of existence. Whilst it's death, being out of existence is basically a get out clause. It's, it's, a, it's a not a consequence, really. I remember uh, being, have, having left the Jehovah's Witnesses at one point before I became a Christian. I thought, well, if God just puts you out of existence, it's actually not that bad. It's, it's fine, no issue. You know, so because of that, because I believe that there is actual punishment for sin, not only death, death is the ultimate outcome. We understand 
that Romans chapters 6 to 8 are speaking of spiritual death. There are people in Romans 6, he addresses people who are alive and he tells them, you are dead in your sins. So he says, you are dead in your sins. You were, you know, if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your saviour, you remain dead in your sins. So what Christians believe and what's Christian teaching according to the New Testament is that Jesus took upon himself the actual suffering due to us. He took upon himself the actual punishment of suffering that was due to each of us individually. That it's personal, every person's sin, the consequence. You can't say that the only consequence, the only singular consequence of sin is death in, in a physical sense because even now there are consequences to sin in the world and in our, in our individual lives. We sin, there is a consequence. Even to the point where Christians uh, have discipline from God and Christians suffer if they sin and when they sin. So Jesus bore our sins in his body by taking the actual punishment due to each of us and then dying and paying the ultimate price by shedding his blood and dying once for all, for all of us. And that is not what I see Watchtower teaching here. Despite the fact that they say the sinless Jesus willingly suffered the penalty for our sins, when they say that, they're meaning that the sinless Jesus died for our sins. They're not talking there in that sentence about the suffering and about the bearing of the sin. And it's very subtle. And, you know, why then ask yourself, does JW.org say to us clearly when you search on JW.org, why did Jesus suffer? It actually says, um, why did Jesus have to suffer and die the painful way that was described in the Gospels? And it says, by subjecting himself to the extreme test and remaining faithful, Jesus refuted once and for all the devil's claim that humans would not remain loyal to God under trial. So they've answered their own question there. And even in another place on JW.org, it says, why did Jesus have to suffer so much? So they're asking that question. It says, because Satan claimed that no human would be loyal to God if he was severely tested. Jesus proved that a perfect man can be loyal to God, even if he suffers to the extreme. Imagine how proud Jehovah was of Jesus. So, yeah, the, the, the saying in, in this book, Isaiah, from 2001, that thing. But really, overall, we know that they're saying that he suffered and, and carried our sins in terms of him doing the healings. Because Matthew refers to Isaiah in that. But that his punishment um, penalty for our sins is his actual death. Now, George Lopez did refer to another article on the matter, a 2009 Watchtower, which is entitled Jehovah's Servant Pierced for Our Transgression. But rather than labour the point, I'd just say read that article for yourself. I still believe that they're not teaching what uh, Christianity says. They're still teaching that the punishment Jesus took was the death, actual death, and that the suffering that he suffered leading up to the death was not him taking our punishment. However, having said all of this, having said all of this, please, if anyone thinks that I've got that wrong, then let me know. Just say what your opinion is, please. And also, another thing to bear in mind is that when the two Jehovah's Witnesses came to my door the other day, 
I uploaded the audio, so there's a video on this channel with the uh, audio on there of that interaction. I brought this point up with the lady. So why did she tell me that Jehovah's Witnesses don't teach that? She actually argued with me and said, no, Jesus did not take the punishment for each of us individually. So it's almost like, from my perspective, Jehovah's Witnesses don't teach what George Lopez says they're teaching. He might be able to reference these articles, but these articles are subtly not really saying that. Okay. Yet, I'll admit, they have printed these words. So let me know your opinion anyway. And, you know, please subscribe and share. And please look at the other videos on this channel because there's lots of other topics discussed in depth. And, you know, it'd be great for me to know your opinion. All right. God bless. Bye.